relatives, friends, teachers, and graduates. Thank you all so much for coming out this morning in support of such an important day. Today is the 2015 Isaiah Quincy School graduation. tradition and reputation in the world of education. In just a short time, the Josiah Quincy Upper School has become one of the most competitive schools in Boston, New England, and in the United States of America. Recently, we were recognized in the top 2% of 22,000 schools nationwide. Every single person in here should be very proud of that because every single person in here has helped us reach that tremendous goal. Especially our graduates. With all that being said, this is just a springboard for your future success. All of you will have success. I have no doubt about that. So look out, world. Our graduates are future stars today. And introducing one of those future stars is the valedictorian, Mr. Samuel Lee. Well, they're still starting, so there's nothing too difficult about them, right? 
then the story gets annoying, where teachers start giving out the homework we have to struggle to understand, where we lose the time we used to have, and the different clubs and organizations that we're in that was easy, well, they're starting to give us assignments now, so now we have to use even more time. After that happened in the show, we then begin to hate the, hate the show, either because of specific character ruins the entire story, or the plotline just went up in flames. We end up getting a personal vendetta against a specific teacher, uh, the story outside the school starts to really suck, and life just gets worse and worse, or so we get. Then we're at the end of the show, only to cry about the entire story, because of how good it was in hindsight. We remember the events that happened throughout the year, from the conflicts with friends to the celebrations we had with this very same moment. Although we might not necessarily want to relive those events, such as like the mini fights that we have, I know how many times I smacked you, Richard. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want it to not have happened to begin with. However, unlike a reality TV show, each one of us doesn't have protagonist status, which lets us complete everything to the highest degree and get a stereotypical good ending. Not all of us have gotten to college with a full ride. Not all of us are happy with the end result that you see in front of your face now. Even more unlike a reality TV show, we can't rewind to redo the past. And we can't fast forward either and skip to where fun stuff really gets fun. We have to play everything at normal speed and live through the entire program, whether we like it or not. And the absolute last difference is that we don't have an epilogue. There's no, and they live happily ever after. There's no rolling credits. There's no trailer for the next season. There's not even an ending sequence. There's only, stay in your seats. Season 2015 will be starting, well, it already started. We don't get a break from reality, and like I said before, we can't fast forward either. There are many things we'll want to remember forever, such as prom night, as well as many things so bad and so cringy we'll want to forget them forever. While all are important memories, Let's face it, will our friends in college know whether or not you said Australian on a history test? Well, actually, yeah, I said that a lot now. Probably people are already know. <coughs> but honestly, do we really need that rewind button? Can we honestly say that we would still be the person we are today if we take that blue pill? For anybody that catches that reference, kudos. Kudos to you. I, for one, loved all my years of high school. Sure, that lack of sleep due to wanting to hand in a good assignment was terrible. Sure, we might have had trouble with a teacher or two for various reasons. But I know that without the hardships I had to go through these past years, I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be the bad Victorian, I would, and I wouldn't even be surprised if I got rejected from Northeastern instead. <laughs> truly, like, truly, you guys were the people who made me who I am, and for that, I am truly grateful. From the dumb jokes we made in class to the various mobile games we all played, we are a community that prides itself for being close to one another and helping each other no matter the, what the problem, and it wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. Uh, all in all, all in all, let's not get stuck in season 2015 and let's prepare for our story over in season, season 2016, the adult years. Don't get stuck in the past and reruns and let's move towards the future wherever our path leads us. Now it's near the end of the speech that TV dramas usually have people crying over how great the speech is. Well, you see how low that goes. Thank you. Uh, but what actually happens in reality that doesn't happen in dramas is that we actually have to face reality. We will soon have taxes to fill, stacks upon stacks of paperwork to do depending on our jobs, and various bosses of which some will absolutely hate. But despite all the hardships we grew here as class of 2015, at a time where the school underwent the most changes. We lived here, now we're graduating, graduating up to the next level, and there's no reason why we can't grow or excel there as well. Again, thank you parents, teachers, headmasters, uh, and the other adults here, all you guys, for supporting us. And thank you, Papi 2015, for always being here at school and making school a lot more interesting than it would have been if I was alone. Once more, thank you guys, and I'll see you around.
The Franklin Medals originated from a legacy left by Benjamin Franklin in 1791. The medals are awarded to the young man and young woman graduate who are advanced in scholarship and meritorious deportment. The 2000, class of 2015 Franklin Medals are awarded to Kaylee C. Harlow.
stage for our next award. John, and 
And then before actually we started our program with the space and everything, I asked John for advice. So, ladies and gentlemen and graduates, the one person who knows the school the most and who loves the children the most in the Boston Public Schools and the Queen's Public School is our superintendent, John McDonough. And it's my pleasure to introduce him to you. recognize the culture 
and sensitivity of who we are to be very mindful about what renewal means and all of us to be intent on finding pathways into the future. You have also led the way in Boston with embracing the international baccalaureate programs, establishing opportunities for the highest academic rigor that actually can be replicated in other schools in the district. I want to take this opportunity to also reaffirm for you the commitment of Mayor Walsh and the commitment of Boston Public Schools to realizing the dream of a new facility for Quincy Upper School that will allow your current success to be supported in the future. As our former superintendent, Dr. Johnson, always reminded us, the true purpose of public education in this country is to prepare its students to be lifelong learners so that they become strong leaders of family, contributing members of community, the future leaders of this great city and of our commonwealth and of our nation, and ultimately the foundation of the, our, our democracy. You, the graduating class of 2015, have met the standards of preparation and we celebrate your success and continue to have both high expectations and great confidence in your future successes. I also want to acknowledge that none of us do this alone. Look around you. Look at the smiling faces of your teachers and staff of your parents, of your families, of your friends. They are all very proud of you. Let us all celebrate their achievement in supporting your success. For some of you, that may not have been easy all the time but know that they have been there for you. So in any commencement cer ceremony, there is usually an expectation that the speaker provides some inspirational remarks that guide you into the future. I, as a person who has been noted by the Boston Globe as lacking charisma <laughs> and being the accidental superintendent, I'm not sure I'm up to that task. Nevertheless, I do want to share with you my thinking of the place that service has in our lives. I've attempted to be off service in different capacities within the Boston Public Schools for over 40 years. All of us, all of us in this room and outside, have the capacity to make a difference in the lives of others. Each and every one of you is able to be of service. You will discover it in different ways and many times be called upon when you least expect it. But we all have the calling to be of service. There are people much greater than I that have captured what this truly means. So I'll share with you what the great Mahatma Gandhi told us. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. We just thank those that supported you on your journey, whether that be your mom or dad, your brother or sister, a special aunt or uncle, your grandmother or grandfather, a teacher, a mentor, 
or a friend that at just the right time and in the right moment let you know that they had your back. They have been of service to you. When we talk about it taking a village to raise a child, this is really the task of mobilizing people to be of service. You've learned about the strength and of knowledge and critical thinking and problem solving. You've learned the problem. You've learned the importance of respect for culture and the strength that is represented by our diversity and understanding our history. You've learned the importance of pathfinding that encourages individual expression and in taking on the issues of this century. And you've learned the importance of renewal for mental, physical, and emotional health. Our challenge, your challenge, is to apply that learning. And whether your dreams take you in the direction of higher education, or law, or medicine, or teaching, or finance, or design, or artistic expression, know that those dreams will also call you to be of service. So it is my wish that you go forth and lose yourself in service to others to find yourself. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Richard Chang, our headmaster. Good morning, everyone. Um, actually, one of the masters. Uh, so, first of all, uh, Mr. McDonough, we have known Mr. McDonough uh, for many years now, not just the, the two years in which he's the interim superintendent, but also when he was the chief financial officer for uh, Boston School District. And we know that he has lived uh, the integrity and the character and the citizenship that he's spoken of. So everything he said, he's lived it. So he's one of those who has really um, not just talked the talk, but walked the walk. And I'm sorry to say, it's not always true in central office, but Mr. McDonough is truly, uh, has been a genuine friend of JQUS. We have many uh, special guests here today, but I do want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Simon Ho in particular. Mr. Ho, if you can stand. You may know that Mr. Ho is the principal of the Josiah Quincy Elementary School, our sister school. All of his students who leave uh, as fifth graders come to our school as sixth graders. So there's a very special relationship between our two schools, and we have, uh, throughout the years, uh, worked together, uh, not only in sharing students, but also programs. Now, Mr. Ho is going to be retiring. He announced his retirement uh, for this year, so that we just want to acknowledge your service to our community. So I wanted to speak this morning on the theme of tribute, on the theme of tribute. Um, Mr. Kelleher and Mr. McDonough has already alluded to the special tribute that's been paid to JQUS. This is by the U.S. News and World Report. This is by the Washington Post, which also ranked JQUS as among the top 2% of school, of high schools in America for the most challenging high school, okay? This is really, this is a really big deal. These 
rankings by the U.S. News and World Report and Washington Post because they are among the most respected news organizations. These are the rankings that colleges look at because there are over 22,000 high schools. They don't know one high school from another. So they rely on these rankings to help them understand which are the really good high schools in America. What this means is that as we go forward, we can expect even more acceptances by excellent colleges to which we're already attending. But even to the most selective colleges, dare I say, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Princeton, MIT, that's where the school is going. Okay, that's where we're going. In some ways, we are the same school today as we were last year and the year before. You know that. It's just that the public, that these news organizations have finally caught up to where you have been. So they're just now coming to understand what we're about. So the question is, what makes us who we are so that we can receive these awards. First, I do want to pay tribute to our graduates because it's about you. The fact is that it's like a ball game. If the players don't play, it doesn't matter what the coaching is or the back off office management does, the players have to deliver. And you're the players, you are the graduates, you are the students who have delivered. So let me tell you something about yourselves. So last month, you all took the International Baccalaureate Diploma Exam, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this, the International Baccalaureate Exam, is a exam to test college level work, college level skills college level thinking. Do you know what? Every single one of our students, seniors, took at least one IB diploma exam. I don't know too many schools that can say every single one of the seniors, senior class, have taken at least one IB exam. Okay, so And at least 75% of you, so that would be three out of four, took at least two IB exam. In fact, the US News and Report study showed that on average, our seniors take four IB diploma exam. You know what's really amazing to me? So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna call out the elephant in the room, okay? And maybe this is memory that's very distant for you. But remember back in sixth grade, remember back in sixth grade, some of you, many of you, received the message either through body language or an actual letter that said you were not good enough for the very best that our school system had have to offer. Is that what happened for many of us? No. That was the message we got. But we know what's interesting? Through your hard work and your willingness to step up. Do you know, we, did, we didn't tell you. Dr. Wong didn't tell you. Mr. McDonough did not tell you. Mr. C and I didn't tell you. When we started the IB program, there were some people who said, you think the, our, the JQ students can handle the IB program? And we said, oh yeah, definitely. But they were people who didn't do that. So as you proved, as you proved people wrong, I'm telling you, they're probably there are probably schools that really regret that they didn't take it, okay? 
But as you prove people wrong, you have made JQUS excellent. That's why we receive these awards from U.S. News and World Report and Washington Post. I do want to also pay tribute to our staff, our teachers and staff members. We know that without their support, um, it, it doesn't happen. You have to have excellent teaching, excellent coaching. Uh, they meet every single week. You know, you get, you get early release on Wednesdays, right? And you get to go home. Okay. They don't. They stay and they use the rest of the day to meet for at least two hours to discuss how to improve teaching and learning so that you can have better achievement. Okay, so I do, I want to acknowledge and applaud our staff, dedicated staff. <laughs> do you also notice that we don't have assistant principals in this school? Do you notice that we don't have assistant principals that care? If you go to many other schools, they got assistant principals with the walkie-talkie, you know, going around. Actually, the only people here with walkie-talkie are the are Simon Wu and, and the ASC students. Have you noticed that? So we rely on our teachers to be the leaders in this building. So they work with me and Mr. C and they help to lead the school. That's why, that's why we receive these awards. So finally, I want to uh, pay tribute to our parents, families, and friends who have supported our students. It's been a long journey. From sixth grade to, to 12th grade, seven years. I did the math, seven years. And some of you graduates, now today you look wonderful as seniors, you've really matured and stepped up, but man, when you were in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, especially seventh grade and eighth grade, you gave your teachers, your family, a lot of grief. Yeah, families, you can, you can appreciate that, right? Man, we survived your temporary insanity. And we, got, we bought you enough time so that you can recover it and look where you are today. So I want to thank our uh, families and parents. So, uh, and finally, I do want to uh, acknowledge and pay tribute to Dr. Wong and Mr. McDonough. Mr. Sorosol and I are very fortunate. You know, we're kind of like Forrest Gump. He's somebody who was just in the right place at the right time. Because Dr. Wong, Mr. McDonough, Mr. McDonough, they were the ones who set up the school, along with our founding uh, faculty members and parents. They set it up. They created this wonderful school environment and Mr. Macerso and I happened to have started as teachers here, and we were very fortunate, and we happened to be headmasters. So we were, I guess, accidental headmasters in some ways, and we are the ones who are able to enjoy the fruits of their labor and the fruits of your labor. So we want to thank Dr. Walt and Ms. McDonough. So finally, I just again want to acknowledge your excellent work. You know, it's interesting, a lot of people like to look at MCAS and SAT and this and that, and they, they, they try, they think they can know a student by those numbers, but we know that's not true. And you know, it's interesting, by those MCAS and SAT numbers, they would have predicted very low outcomes. But look at you. According to U.S. News and World Report, over two-thirds of you, so you haven't gotten the results back from your diploma exams, right, from um, 
the IB is going to be marking up the exam. You won't find out until July. But according to U.S. News, you're, at least two-thirds of you are going to get a passing score on your IB exam in at least one course, okay? That's why you're going to be moving on as a class. You're going to Boston University, Brandeis, Clark, Holy Cross, Johnson & Wales, Northeastern, Suffolk, UMass Amherst, UMass Boston, Wentworth, and other quality schools. That's where you're going. So you can see, we are so proud of you. We know it wouldn't surprise us when we read about you in the Boston Globe about some leadership or some service that you're going to perform for our community, okay? It wouldn't surprise us at all. Not at all. We're expecting it. Okay, so we expect you to do just as Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. McDonald had mentioned, to be good citizens, to step up. You must be the leaders. You need to stand up to be the leaders of our community. Because guess what? If you don't stand up, people from the outside are going to come and tell us what to do. So I want you to stand to, I want you stand up. Let this be a very physical and symbolic commitment. Would you commit that you would think about running for the city council in the future, running for whatever political office or organizational opportunities. And so if you're in a company or if you're in a nonprofit and there's a leadership opportunity, please step up, okay? Because I know we've been told messages in the past that we're not good enough, but you've proven you are good enough. So please step up. Thank you very much. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our second headmaster, my second boss, Mr. Steve Sarasoli. Thank you. We sat, we sat them all in order, and it was like, it was like all special attention to see. Um, so I, I guess I have the, the pleasure of being the, the last speaker. I'm going to keep this short. Um, as, uh, yeah, before, uh, I don't know if you've heard about the U.S. News and World Report. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so it, it took a lot of work to put together today's ceremony, and probably 80 to 100 people involved, families, students, staff. I can't name them all, but there are two people more than any other that every year make our graduation special. So the, uh, I'd like to put more round of applause for the wonderful Rob Coyne and Eric Chapman. Thank you. Uh, second of all, I definitely want to thank parents. Uh, I'm at a very different place in my life than all of you. I, my oldest son is five and going into kindergarten next year. So I know, my wife and I know, the anxiety of school choice. We talk about it all the time. And ultimately, we know that we're taking a leap of faith and we're trusting the school with our children. And there's no greater trust I can possibly give. So the trust you've given us with your children, uh, it's an awesome honor. It's incredibly flattering. We can only hope we live up to that trust. Uh, it's been our pleasure to educate your children and it's something every day we know we couldn't do without you. Um, Confucius once said that the strength of a nation derives from the integrity of a house. It's the work you've done with our graduates, character, integrity, commitment to excellence, that you've built into them that have allowed us to do whatever we've been able to do. So thank you very much for that. Um, which does beg the question I'd like to hesitantly introduce the term today of the JQUS Nation. We talk about our family, 
but this is an ever-growing family with each year of alumni and community partners. My only hesitancy at calling this JGOS Nation is it's a little bit too close to that miserable group called Red Sox Nation. And uh, thank you for you out there. Um, but we really are a family, and we really do consider all our alumni as they come back our partners. So to our graduates, we've worked for you for seven years. Now we need to work with you to help support the next generation of students coming to us. Thank you. Very much. So, for all the support, as Superintendent McDonald, case you don't know, we are considered part of our family as well. When we wanted to be an Ivy school, and Ivy came to visit, you were in the room selling it to them, telling them you could trust us. As we've gone forward with the building project, you've been in the room telling them you could trust us. That's not just words, it's walk the walk. You've been there for us, we'll be there for you. Thank you very much. In case you're wondering, uh, this comes with certain privileges. Uh, as Dr. Wong knows, that once you're in the family, uh, we do printing and copying services whenever you like to come in. Uh, and Ms. Lee will help you. It's a standard inside joke amongst our staff from Dr. Wong's help. Uh, the last thing I'd like to get to is to talk about the graduates themselves. You may not know this about schools, and graduates you may, you may not know this either, but every graduating class has its own personality, its own flavor. It's like parenting, you, you swear, you, you, break, you raise them the same way, but they turned out different. Some graduating classes are a little louder, some are more reflective, some are more athletic, some are more artistic. They're all a little bit different. And I want to talk to you about what you've been to us. And I want to tell everybody here what you've been for us also. I'm going to use a word to describe you that I think is misused and misunderstood. I'm going to use the word challenging. Unfortunately, people sometimes think challenging means bad. That's not what I mean at all. Our graduates are, are young men and women of integrity and character. I have complete trust in their decision making. Um, what I mean by challenging is what Maya Angelou meant by challenging, when she said she's not the easiest person to live with. Because the challenge she puts on herself was so great that that challenge went on to the people around her. You put a challenge on yourself that forced JQS to have to grow up. You forced us to get better because you demanded it. You demanded that we had a more rigorous curriculum. We've increased our math curriculum in response to your demands and willingness. We've had to build more independent projects because of your commitment to get them done. We've had to have more community events because you've demanded that there should be more community events. You've demanded. And we did not deliver on this while you're here, but we will deliver the start of next year on having a student lounge so students have a place to get tutoring, Wi-Fi access, and printing. That was from all of you. And you demanded that we get better. And that logistically, the Josiah Quincy Upper School needs to get better at planning things. In particular, use of the auditorium. I know there's some hurt emotions around this, so I want to address it. We, as a school, ultimately this stops with Mr. Chang and I, we made a big mistake. We double booked the auditorium. You had something you really cared about, that was really important to our community, that we valued, that we wanted to happen, and we scheduled at the same time as something else that we valued. There's no real excuse for that other than to say we're sorry. But your response to it was so impressive and it was a moment of pride. You wrote a letter to Mr. Chang and I, you sent it to us via email. It was the most professional dressing down I've received from a group of students in my life. It clearly, politely, and professionally explained how wrong we were, and why we were wrong, and why we shouldn't have done it. We're sorry. But I want to say, it ended with our graduates saying, even though we made that mistake, and even though we shouldn't have, you are still going to support the school's events and still make sure your event took place. That is character. Thank you. So, this is what I mean by challenging us. You challenged us and demanded we get better, but you supported us 
to get better. That's what we've been trying to do for you. That's why ID exists for us. For seven years, we've tried to challenge you to be better, but let you know we'd be with you every step of the way. But you are that for us, and we will be eternally grateful for that. So thank you again. And so my final in conclusion is advice off that theme is to always cherish the people around you that tell you and challenge you to get better but are always willing to be with you each step of the way and continue to be that for those you love because ultimately those are the people that are with you and will help you achieve your dreams. Congratulations class of 2015. It's been <laughs> So by now, everybody must feel like they dressed in wool, so let us graduate. Ms. Dean and Ms. Chang, please come to the stage to read the names. I apologize. Can you can not prepare. Put 
Justin Chow. Derek Chen. Mandy Chen. Ryan Chung. Adam T. Chin. Janae L. Curry. <laughs> Myla Damaty. <laughs> Kevin Dong. <laughs> Adriana Bree Figueroa. Ariana Gomez. <laughs> Joseph Y. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mindy Yanting Guan. Darius Hale. Zenabria Haynes Hill. Susan He. Joshua Hernandez. Jack Hong. Nelson Huang.
Samuel Ochoa. Christopher Perez. <laughs> Congratulations for the class of 2015.